Wood stoves are the perfect source to heat your house. Renewable, available, inexpensive. It's, it's the best heat and it serves multiple purposes. It's perfect for you. Live a happy freedom life. Wood heat is the perfect best source of heating up your house, in my opinion. And, oh boy, this is kind of warm right here. And, and it's just, in our self-sufficient stage, I want to talk to you about the entire concept from beginning to end of using wood heat. And the stove with the fire going is the end product. For, for you in your, you know, heating your home. And I think it's perfectly renewable. There's a lot of arguments. People say, oh, you shouldn't be burning wood. You know, states and places or the EPA is all getting involved with trying to get rid of wood heat. To me, that just makes no sense. I mean, the planet has been burning wood since the beginning of time. You know, lightning strikes, forest fires, volcanoes exploding, you know, trees on fire. I mean, wood has been burning forever and in science i mean there's something called the carbon cycle you know there, there's a finite amount of carbon on this planet it's not like we're actually adding carbon like they want you to believe i mean when wood and things you know petroleum when things burn they release carbon into the air but there's nature has provided for that with the carbon cycle and and it's it's you know, going plants absorb carbon and things like that. So as a quick example, I just planted a gala apple tree out in our little orchard that we're growing. We got apple trees and a pear tree and peach trees, you know, to help provide us with food. And the apple trees and the peach tree, you know, they absorb the carbon that's in the air. That's part of that carbon cycle. So anyway, the wood stove here is the end product. And for you to add a wood stove to your home, you know, you're probably in today's world, this, we did this nine years ago now, eight or nine years ago. And, you know, you're probably looking at for a bare bones, basic, you know, nothing frills stove, you're probably looking at six or $700. And then this is just plain stove pipe, but the stuff that's up on the roof of the house the lined, you know, double or triple wall, depending on what the zoning is where you live. You know, that stove pipe, usually you can get it in a kit, and that's probably six or seven hundred dollars too. So you're looking at twelve hundred dollars to fifteen hundred dollars for a, a basic installed stove. And that's pretty much gonna last forever. You know, propane furnaces, natural gas furnaces baseboard, electric heat in the floor, you know, all those things have a pretty finite lifetime to them and, and require some maintenance. This wood stove is going to outlast me. Yeah, I'll have to reply, replace the bricks on the inside and I'll have to do some maintenance work on it. And I'll probably, you know, have to do some work with the stove pipe. But the stove is going to be here literally forever. And you can't say that about many other sources of heat. So once you got it in your house, you're, you're good to go. Every fall before season starts, I get up on the roof and I, you know, clean the stove pipe and inspect it and things like that. So this is the end product. So all the way at the beginning of the product, which is really important and I want to share with you my thoughts on that, is you should have a wood lot. So you can provide your own firewood. That's kind of, you know, it's the whole process from beginning to end. Growing the trees, harvesting the trees, bringing, you know, splitting, stacking, drying, seasoning, bringing it into the house to heat. It, it's everything. So I want you to think seriously about acquiring a wood lot. And it may sound a little daunting, but the thing is, your piece of land, two acres, three acres, five acres, you know, something in that neighborhood of woods, of trees. Welcome to our five acre tree lot. Because where you live, you know, you may be on a 10 acre piece of property or a 20 acre piece of property, but you may not have many trees on it because maybe it's pasture, 
open land, you know, you've got a few trees, but if you start cutting them down every year, you're going to run out. So think about acquiring a woodlot in the, you know, two to five acre range. And it's not that expensive because you can buy a piece of land of woods. First, it's all woods. People don't want to build houses on woods because it takes a lot of, of prep to build an area, you know, where you can put a house up. And you can buy a piece of land that you can't even put a house on. It's, it's non-buildable. You know, maybe it won't perk for a septic system or it's, you know, ledge or steep or, you know, whatever reason. But find a piece of land that can't be built on. It's non-buildable. Maybe it's on a seasonal road, you know, up at the end of a road that you can't get to in the winter or the spring or when it's muddy or whatever. You know, only has seasonal access to it. So it has limited, that's going to have limited appeal. You know, no electricity, no utilities. You just find that. Now, the other thing is you want the piece of land to be close to where you live. You know, you don't want to be in another state or hours away because then that's going to make getting the firewood to you, you know, really difficult. You want the property to be nearby. So try to get it as close to where you live as you can. And it's going to, you know, it's not just for the firewood. You could hunt on that land if necessary. If you need to feed your family, you can go out to your you know, woodlot and, and do some hunting. You could, it could be a bug out area. You know, you could have a little RV or something and you could, you know, go stay on that land if you need to, if things really do get bad. You know, there's just so many things. So that's, you know, my thinking is it's a perfect source of heat. The other thing here, you know, is you can cook on it. I've got a teapot here with some water so we can warm up tea. And that's actually kind of my little, um, it's a security alarm for me, like at nighttime when I'm sleeping, is if the stove gets really, really hot, it's sitting out here on the corner of the stove, and it's got the little whistler thing on it. So if the stove gets too hot during the night, that'll start whistling to alert me that, you know, the temperature is getting a little higher than we want it to be. So I can get up and throw another log in or, or choke down the, you know, the air intake or whatever. So the teapot for hot water and my security at night. And I put on here to show you is we've got a good old fashioned percolator coffee pot. And we've had this for years and years and years. We had it when we were living on the sailboat and that. So that you can make your coffee on the wood stove if the electricity's out, maybe a bad storm in the winter time or whatever, if the grid's down for some reason. You know, I gotta have my coffee so I can perk my coffee on the wood stove. You can cook on it. We've got cast iron griddles and, and skillets and that, and you can make, cook your eggs. You can warm up a can of pork and beans or, you know, SpaghettiOs or whatever on the stove. So it, it's, you know, it's keeping you warm. I mean, I'm like, if you could touch my skin right now, I am toasty warm here. And you make your coffee, your tea, you can cook on it, it heats your house, you're independent, doesn't need any electricity. If you listen, I didn't unplug the blower because I wanted you to be able to hear it, but I do have a homemade blower on the back of the stove with a thing coming up on the back that's blowing air. It's one of those turbine circular type fans and it's, a, it's got like a dimmer switch, so I've got it turned down and it blow, it's blowing the air up the back of the stove and helping get the air out into the room. So hopefully that noise isn't too loud. The hum in the background is the blower on the stove. So think about those things. Think about a wood lot. I really, really want you to consider getting a wood lot. Trees, trees, everywhere, trees. For the firewood, for hunting, for bug out. The peace of mind that knowing that that land is yours and and you can recycle you know the renewable wood which i think is the best source of the most renewable heating solution on the planet is is burning wood because it's it's normal it's natural it's been done forever and then you bring your firewood and you chop it and you split it which warms you up too and then you've got your stove here and it heats you all up. So really consider those things because we want you living happy and fun loving 
and enjoy in life and freedom. Just like it says, freedom! <laughs>